Uh, I know... It's a pretty area to the academic in-house. <laughs> I know uh, the logo will... It has stayed the same for both of these. I, we're working on that. Yeah, well, more specifically me. We're working on uh, getting a specific logo for this one. Uh, as for academic alehouse content, I know it's been few and far, uh, few and far between of late, and that's mostly because anything we would cover is like uh, already already done by other people. No, it's not that. I have no problem covering what other people cover. I think it's just that um, fuck. How do I, how do I put this? There's not much to cover outside of the coronavirus, and you do one episode on that, and that's about it. Uh, me and Ryan are planning to do a huge sort of retrospective, like in maybe, mm. probably August. Once this is all over, I think we'll go basically go through. And run through the whole thing and talk about not only our experiences, but like the sh like the shit that went down. And there is shit that went down throughout this whole thing, but it was never interesting or like relevant enough for us to do a full episode on it. And most other people have covered it as if they've been paying attention. So. Now, onto the council, onto the uh, main topic of our little. Of our. Um, of our episode? Yes. Our episode is about, well, two things. First, um, a holdover from last week, which was the yeah. um, Sony. Sony decided uh, the Last of Us leaks. You remember those? The Last yeah. of Us leaks that um, basically put Last of Us 2 on permanent no it's never coming out mode well anybody well in the week prior to that prior to us talking about it everyone who talked about this got a copyright strike from basically a company that was connected to sony in some way and sony basically said if you spoil the game we're we don't want you talking about this game we don't want you talking about the leaks. We don't talk want, want you talking about blah, blah, uh, X, Y, and Z, basically. So that was so. So Sony basically abused YouTube's copyright system. Did you seriously just say Z? I don't know. You said Z. Whatever. I'm part British. Anyway. Oh, okay, I'm part Italian. I don't say, I don't start using the Italian alphabet. But... I was being sarcastic, but regardless, the Sony leaks, so Sony, in their infinite wisdom, struck down basically anyone that was talking about this. This is uh, Geeks and Gamers, there's mm. uh, Just Some Guy, people I you follow, The Quartering was the one, who, honestly, I don't like his content, really. Yeah, I, I've, I've kind of lost interest in him over time. I have... I just, the dude's fine. Like, I just don't... Like, his voice irks me. Oh, that's it. <laughs> like, his voice irks me. And it has nothing to do with the content he covers. It has nothing to do with his politics or nothing. His voice just irks me. And if someone wants to start petty YouTube drama over that, I'm game. <laughs> I'll go up against the quartering. <laughs> that's fine by me. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, don't drag like, me dude, I don't like your voice. That's all. I have no issue with you <laughs> beyond that. But yeah, so then 
after basically everyone said, hey, Sony's copyright striking our videos, and they counterclaimed, saying uh, Sony had no right to copyright strike their videos, which they didn't, because everything was covered under fair use. Sony came back and said, oh, we want these specific things. Uh, they let a couple of the videos slide. And they came back and said, we want these specific things that uh, taken from the video. Otherwise, the video stays ours. Problem is, everything that the video showed was fair use still, so Sony doesn't really have a case. So was it ever confirmed who actually who actually did the leaks? Um, it was a, it, a disgruntled employee. That no, I don't. I don't think it was a disgruntled employee. I think it. Uh, I think it finally came out like it was. Uh, like some random hacker, which that's Sony's official line. And personally, uh, I'm not inclined to believe it, Sony. What was Sony and getting hacked by people? I don't know. Remember that? Bit, remember the big hack from like 2016? Uh, what for? I, I think it was quote North Korea. It had to do with the interview. Mm. Or maybe it was 2015. I remember Sony having a big ha like a big hack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Honestly, the interview would have passed unremarked if anyone had, like, if North Korea had just said, eh. Yeah, I mean... But that's the problem when you are a totalitarian ideologue. Yeah, Any well, sort of mockery of you is mockery of your state and mockery of your glorious people's republic, so you can't let it stand. Well. Well, apparent, I guess apparently Kim Jong-il had tougher skin than his son because apparently North Korea didn't have a problem with Team America World Police. Where T Kim Jong-il is the main antagonist. He talks in a very stereotypical Asian accent. <laughs> sings a song about how lonely he is. <laughs> then he's revealed to be an alien cockroach at the very end. Okay. Anyway. Um... So yeah, that that's the Sony update. Apparently, and I can't confirm this. It would it just scrolled across my feed. Someone had it in their like video description or like a uh, thumbnail that Sony had bribed creators to for some reason, which honestly, I would to like get their content back, which honestly, I wouldn't put it past them, but I don't have any confirmation that that's true. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, it's like I wonder if this drama is going to be remember, going to be a remembered more than or. Oh, let me start over. If the, the the drama surrounding the game will be remembered more than the actual game will be. I th apparently the game suspended indefinitely, so we'll never get the game. Uh, that was what, that was what I last heard. Do you think they're going to postpone the release, or do you think they're going to try to redo it from the ground up? I think they're not going to release it. Mm -hmm. Like, like a couple of, like, it would be releasing this week if they could release it, honestly. That being said... Let's talk about our f other topic. Oh boy. Do you remember the Twitter Trust and Safety Council? I do not. Uh, Twitter has a Trust and Safety Council. You mean so, Twitch? Now, naturally. It would fall into Twitch to Twitch being in Silicon Valley and under constant pressure to be a radically left wing to produce its own trust and safety council. So introducing the Twitch Ad Safety Advisory Council. Mm. This occurred May 14th. This was posted May 14th, 2020. <clears throat> 
Keeping our community safe and healthy is a top priority for Twitch. Today, we're excited to announce the formation of the Twitch Safety Advisory Council, which will support the growth of our community moving forward. The Safety Advisory Council will inform and guide decisions made at Twitch by contributing their experience, expertise, and belief in Twitch's mission of empowering communities to create, to create together. The Council will advise on a number of topics, including... Drafting new policies and policy updates, developing products and features to improve safety and moderation, promoting healthy stream and work-life balance habits, protecting the interest of marginalized groups, Ooh. identifying emerging trends that could impact the Twitch experience. <clears throat> this group is composed of online safety experts in, and Twitch creators who have, deep, who have a deep understanding of Twitch, its content, and its community. When developing this council, we felt it was essential to include both experts who can provide external an external perspective, as well as Twitch streamers who deeply understand creators' unique challenges and viewpoints. Each member of the council was carefully selected based on their familiarity with the Twi Twitch community and their relevant personal and professional experiences. We are excited to work with a, this talented group to make Twitch the best place to grow and foster the, a community, the creation of safe the Safety Advisory Council is just one way we are enhancing our approach to issues of trust and safety. We will continue to invest in tools, products, and policies that promote the safety and well-being of everyone on Twitch. <clears throat> Shall we meet the members? I already see what... Is that dude mixed race or is he... Or is, this, or is that like a, a, like a male Rachel Dolezal? Well, let's find out. This is Alex Holmes. Alex mm -hmm. is CEO, deputy CEO at nonprofit the Diana Award. But what about their pronouns? Which is a legacy to Princess Diana's belief that young people have the power to change the world. He is the founder of the peer to peer support program Anti Bullying Ambassadors, a network of trained young people dedicated to preventing peer on peer violence and on, on and offline and bullying. Particularly in schools, Alex sits on the global safety advisory boards of a number of the major social media and tech companies, advising them on their approach to safety and online harms. Hmm. Well, let's see what the Diana Award heard is. All right. Uh, Princess of Wales, or believe that young people have the power to change the world. It's a big mission. Let's see. Well, we're on the About Us page. Never mind. Our mission. To foster, develop, and inspire positive change in the lives of young people. Let's see their program. So when do you stop being young? At what age? Ah, uh, good question. I'm 25, so do I fall into this category still? Or am I too old to change the world? So apparently they have training for anti-bullying. And here I thought anti-bullying was just not being an asshole. You know. Well, that, well, that that make things too easy. You got to I I suspect uh, it's I have no way to back this up. This is just me speculating, but it kind of makes you wonder like if most of these people who lead anti-bullying movements are just very people who are very mentally unstable because of bullying. Mm. Uh, yep. Coe Carnage. He appears to be a straight white man. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. Most of these trust and safety councils don't allow straight white men. Uh, he's a Twitch partner, one of the original variety streamers. He plays most major releases and indie darlings as well, known for his 100% franchise play place loot playthroughs leading up to major game releases. Co Carnage is known for his positive community, he, the coalition, and his slogan, happy, helpful, respectful. Um I don't know this guy. And honestly, I probably should have looked up everyone on this council, but I was like working and sleeping yeah. and doing other things. Life is life is hard. Um Yeah. Life really sucks once you get out of college. <laughs> yeah. Um but I guarantee you with that slogan happy helpful respectful his mods are tyrants like you right. say one you can't curse in his chat 
really. I, so I'd be willing to bet. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Cup of Noodle, and she looks plastic. Sorry, but she does. All right. Cup of Noodle is a partner Twitch ambassador and host commentator of the Mayor of Cupton, a lover of zombies and a music connoisseur. Her streams run from playing game to hosting conversations on and on-site interviews to providing colorful commentary at esports live events. So she's not actually a streamer; she's just a basically a reporter. So I guess you could say a journalist. Yeah. Hey. Emma. <laughs> y I'm gonna butcher this last name. Land Emma Yanso. Uh, I don't know. Emma is the director for the Center of Democracy and Technologies Free Expression Project that leads the CDT's work to promote law and policy and support internet users' free expression rights in the United States, the European Union, and around the world. The project's work spans many subjects, including human trafficking, piracy, privacy, and online reputation issues, counterterrorism, and radicalizing content. Okay. What's radicalizing content? Radicalizing content, disinformation, and online harass harassments. Harassment. What, is, what does it mean to radicalize content? Yeah, what is radicalizing content is what I would first ask. And the why, why is it in quotes? It, is, it, is Twitch basically admitting we don't, we, are, we don't know how they define radicalizing content? What about disinformation? Disinformation is fairly loose, and online harassment harassment is also very very loose. <clears throat> uh, Emma's areas focusing a uh, focus include intermediary liability law, the capabilities and limitations of automated content analysis, transparency reporting, and best practices in content moderation for empowering users and online communities. That was a lot of word salad. But I'm guessing she's, just from what it sounds like, she's an overpaid mod. Like, it okay. sounds like she's an overpaid mod. Alright. Uh, let's see. Hold on. And now on I, to the person I of the I have this pulled up. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh. I actually yeah, have this pulled up, but I don't know if we can find her. Would it be an open internet, you think? What was that? Oh, um... Oh, I realized... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm not actually open onto the website. You are. Yeah. I forgot to share my screen. Hold on. Blaken does not know how to work technology. Oh, this is awkward. Yeah, uh, it's not letting me share. Why not? Why not indeed? What did you do? What did you do? No, I don't want to disable. 
Uh, to anybody who stumbles across this video, we are currently experiencing some technical difficulties. Please bear yeah. with us. Alright, well, um, it's not letting me share my screen. Really? Why not? Oh. Because it wouldn't let me scroll down. I hate the whole existence right now. So much. All right. All right. We're Let's back. try this again. We're back. Here we go. Uh, I don't know. Net neutrality. I have very much not a fan of net neutrality. Mm. It's bullshit. But uh, yeah. Razor Fist explains it better than I ever could. I don't know where I would go in this. Like, what do you think? Cybersecurity and standards? I, I do not know. Did, did the description... What did the description say about her? Uh, Cyber Democracy and Technologies Free Expression Project in Leeds... Uh, so, free expression. It would be... Oops. So let's see. Internet and new technologies give individuals the ability to publish and receive information, participate in political process, and share knowledge. CDT has fought to extend the highest level of free speech protections to the internet and keep new technologies free of government censorship and content gatekeepers. Private online services service providers need to protect need to be protected from legal liability for content posted by users so that they will be willing to host it. Uh, user choice. You know, I don't see much that would indicate to me this is a, that this, at least the organization. I don't know about the person, but the organization seems to be very much on the surface in favor of free speech and i've noticed i'm noticing that a lot like these seem to be people well like uh, there are some people like uh alex holmes he might be a uh, a decent uh person to have on there at least fairly center or leaning. I, I'm not seeing the the far left radicalism like the uh, the feminists or anything like that on here. Well, not yet, at least. Not I'm yet, really but we we we're we'll get here. Yes. But we'll right now to... we're here, and as f like these two, like yeah, his chat's probably a hellhole, an empty void in which you scream into but if you interact with him she's basically not uh like she's a she's not necessarily a streamer she's just a part of twitch and these people seem to be like fighting for free speech online and stuff like that so Yeah, so we so get far, now so we get to bit. her and we're gonna skip her because no, oh, you're gonna skip we're gonna skip her you're because good. we can come back and talk about her and De all dedicate the, her yeah. shit. Dedicate the entire episode or the rest of the episode. Yeah, Doctor Samir Hindu ha 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 something well, Middle Eastern. Flawless sounding. pronunciation. It's a very flawless pronunciation. Good job. Hindujas, I assume. Or, it's probably Hindujas. A professor at the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice in Florida, Atlantic, and at Florida Atlantic University, good lord, and co-director of the Cyberbullying Research Center. He is recognized internationally for his back groundbreaking work on the subjects of cyberbullying, and sexting, and social media abuse, concerns that have paralleled the exponential growth of growth in online communication by young people 
a noted speaker and expert on teens and social media use, Dr. Er, Hinjuha also trains students, educators, parents, mental health professionals, and other youth workers on how to promote the positive use of technology. Dr. Hinjuha, Hinduha is also co-founder and co-editor-in-chief of the International Journal of Bullying Prevention, a new peer-reviewed journal for from Springer. Well, at least it's peer-reviewed. You'll notice a lot, like it, if it didn't, if it uh, just said journal, I would have said mm, probably not. But it's peer-reviewed, which means he has to go, which means his contemporaries can go in and be like, "Dude, this is stupid." Um, but that depends. What that depends what kind of peers he has. If that's like, do they are do they have different beliefs themselves, or is this all just a, a click? Well, it means any peer can review it, okay. can review it and reject it. Okay. And point out the flaws in his work. Um. But what if his pit, what if what if none of his peers do that? Like, what if they're all in the same the, path, thought, thought processing? All right, I don't know too much about criminology and criminal justice, but as far as I'm aware, these are like. Uh, worthwhile degrees to get. Like, they're not going to lead you to nothing, but they're not going to like, let you they're not going to lead you to nothing, at the very least. So it's not like he's a professor of gender or poly or, like, some other thing. Now, I don't believe in cyberbullying. Honestly, I really don't. Well, you but don't? Why not? I don't. I don't believe in cyberbullying because you can disengage with social media. Like mm -hmm. uh, one of the things with one of the major things with bullying is that you can't disengage from it. Like you have to. It is a forced interaction. With social media, all you have to do is turn off your notifications and turn off Twitter. Basically, like, turn off Facebook, turn off Twitter, turn off Instagram, and basically say, fuck off, off I don't want to deal with social media right now. Yeah, but when you do stuff like that, then people will start calling you a pussy that you can't handle criticism. The fuck do I care? Pussy. I'm not getting the note. I'm not seeing them. Like, unless you're like me, and really, really OCD about the little red bubbles that pop up on your phone when you have, like, a thousand notifications then the fuck do you care? Like, that's the thing about... That's my thing about cyberbullying. Is you can disengage with that media. Like, you can disengage with social media and... Nothing happens. You can't disengage with school, where you have to go face your bully every day. You can't disengage with work, where you have to go face your bully every... The people that bully you every day. You can disengage with social media, and that's why I don't like necessarily like how much stock we're putting in putting in the idea of cyberbullying. It is you worthy of research. I, I will work. admit, but it is worthy of res It is something worthy of research. But honestly, I don't believe it is at like it is the next big thing. It's the next big fight. It's Karen's worried that it. Little Timmy can't sees fuck fuck words online. That seems to be the major th thing. All right. And people are welcome to disagree with me on that. I know cool. I am woefully uneducated on cyberbullying. So wait, who gets who gets bullied at work? A lot of people, dude. A lot of people get bullied at work. High school... You know that Bowling for Soup song, High School Never Ends? No. Look it up. It is 100% true. All of it. Every word of that song is pure gold. The song's great, by the way. Pure gold and absolutely true. I don't know. In my, per in my personal uh, outside-the-internet life, bullying pretty much stopped after high school. Yeah. People All right. Just got People just don't really give a shit anymore once you reach adulthood. Next up, T.L. Taylor. 
T.L. Taylor is a professor of, professor of comparative media studies at MIT. All right, that should that's a red flag right there. Uh, and co-founder and director of research for Any Key, an organization dedicated to supporting and developing fair and inclusive esports. Ooh, inclusive. There's the bug well, word. I've got the thing pulled up, so we'll look at it in oh. a second. Perhaps She's a qualitative there's... sociologist. Okay. He, that's yeah. another big red flag. Who's focused yeah, hold on, on... Hold on, hold on? So, you think we should make a drinking game out of this? Just take shots every time they use buzzwords. No, that that's the thing. That's the thing. She's not. She's not. Uh, that's not a buzzword. That's a. That's a. No, no, no. I meant like inclusive, inclusivity. No, I don't Di want to die. Diversity, inclusivity, diversity. No, hey, man, I don't want how, to this die. Is, this is how I advertise the show to your subscribers. <laughs> I did. So, I did say that you got down yourselves in alcohol. Who has focused on internet and game studies over two for over two decades? Dr. Taylor's research explores the interrelations between culture and technology in online leisure environments. Her 2018 book, Watch Me Play: Twitch: The Rise of, Li of Game Live Streaming, is the first of its kind to chronicle the emerging media space of online game broadcasting. All right, let's check out her thing. Any key advocates for diversity and inclusion in gaming. Hey, two buzzwords. There we go. Welcome any welcome anybody, including ev include everybody. F play fair. Any key create was created to foster change, empower the champions who are making a difference in competitive gaming. Throughout our innovative and impactful programs, we were working to build more inclusive, accessible esports for all. The good luck okay. have fun pledge. Video games and esports should be open to all. Join us in creating a community of gamers that welcomes anybody and includes everybody by pledging to blah blah blah. Yeah, Diversity, that... inclusion, equity. Ooh, or do those have links? Do the or do the big bold words have links? No, they're just blurbs. Aww. Aww. By increasing the percentage of marginalized people represented and participating in competitive gaming. Okay. Is Korea not marginalized? They're Asian. Like, this is the thing about radical leftism. If it's not brown, it doesn't count. Then that's the funniest thing in the world to be. Like, the moment you say Korea dominates competitive gaming Korea and China uh, Asian countries dominate competitive gaming like uh, last year or two years ago a North American LCS team won the League of Legends World Championship it was a big fucking deal because until then for the last uh, since like the second LCS since the second Worlds in League of Legends, a North American team hadn't won. What's up, John Rice? You're like... <laughs> yeah. We're talking about how um, radical leftism and diversity don't actually mix because they don't count Asians as, my, as marginalized peoples. Yes, and then we'll eventually get to Deer Girl. <laughs> we'll, eventually. we'll get there. Inclusion. By improving the quality of meaningful participation in gaming spaces for members of marginalized groups. Uh, equity by creating, providing new opportunities and resources for marginalized gamers, casters, and streamers. Yeah. It, it's just, uh, are you brown? Good. We can, we will help you. Oh, so, will, yeah. I, I think the word you're looking for is exploit. Yes. Yes. Exploit is a good word. Exploit is a good word. Uh, this thing is run by her, or she's one of the directors of research, so she's not running, but she's a participating member. Uh, yeah, I, I was looking for radical leftism, I, I think, I, I think I found it. It, she, she's a qualitative sociologist, that should be a red flag to anyone, which means 
our work isn't based on necessarily concrete data. Okay, actually, actually, scroll back up. I want to see the picture of her. Are those dreadlocks? Yes. Isn't that cultural appropriation? Don't ask me. I don't believe in that. Well, you're a you're a marginalized person, and she's a white per and she's white, so I don't know. <laughs> but I don't wear dreadlocks because I don't have the facial structure for it. It's all about the facial structure. <laughs> it is absolutely all about the facial structure. So how how far out does your jaw have to be? Like how far out does it have to be sticking out for dreadlocks to work? If that's where we're going with this. I don't know. She shouldn't wear dreadlocks either, but it's her hair, so I'm not going to judge. I just don't believe I have the facial structure for it. Anyway. Okay. Um. Oh no, she is a co-founder. She's a she's a founder, so she is like one of the heads, one of the head people. She's a qualitative sociologist. Okay, so qualitative versus quantitative means her work isn't necessarily based on hard data. It's based on suppositions of hard data of like random data like she's a soft she's soft numbers versus hard numbers she's the kind of person who says well the average is this therefore i can conclude instead of saying instead of going quantitative which is says all right the average is this and this is the median and this is mode blah 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 this is the average, but if we look at each of the individual numbers, if we look at the individual numbers on the table, well, we can see a differing trend. We can conclude something else. Uh, right. Zizran. Zizran. Zizran is a Twitch partner who has been streaming since 2015. His streams mostly focus on ARPGs, particularly Path of Exile. He believes that Twitch is a, has a culture you can't find anywhere else and looks forward to helping Twitch make rules clear, reducing community confusion, specifically when it comes to bans and suspensions on the platform. A uh, a culture, having a, a seen several like people anyone. banned from Twitch or suspended from Twitch for seemingly no reason or seemingly very ill-explained reasons, I actually agree with this guy. I don't uh, know what an ARPG is. I, I'm good at American RPG, perhaps. Oh. Well, let's well let's see what Path to Path of Exile is. I've never heard of that game. Hmm. Path of Exile. It is. I think I've heard of it, but that's because I play RPGs okay. like religiously. Well, well, apparently the game. Well, apparently the developers who made it are are in New Zealand. Hmm. Hmm. Oh well. All right, let's well, go back to. Oh, uh, we're do now we're doing Dear Girl. Yes. Let's oh, talk about hold, hold ferociously Steph. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to go. I need to go get whiskey. I need a drink for this. I'll be back. Go entertain John. All right. Well, hello, John. <laughs> John. Uh, we missed you yesterday. Oh, well, I missed you yesterday. Uh, I wasn't on for that long, so you might have just like not been able to get on. But, but we. I talked about Biden. Uh, <laughs> Biden's latest gaffe. <laughs> Remember, if you don't vote for Biden, you're not black. <laughs> Good lord. It it it's hilarious to me that they think he can beat that anyone anywhere thought Biden had an outside shot of beating Trump. Like so so <laughs> Yeah. It's all right. It's still up though. Someone somewhere believed by Someone, there are people out there that believe Biden can beat Trump in his current state. We feel bad for those people. <laughs> I do. I genuinely feel bad for people who uh, who believe Biden can win against Trump 
at right now. It doesn't help that he also killed me too. Like straight up murdered it. The founder of Me Too. <laughs> the founder of Me Too came out and said, "Yes, I believe you, Stacy Tara Reed. Yes, you. What happened to you was awful, but we need to beat evil Drumpler." Or so. Uh, shut up. <laughs> Oh. Okay, I am back. Good, I'd run out of things to say. <laughs> I got me some I got me some royal crown or no. Crown Royal. Fuck, got it mixed up. At least you can drink. I don't have any alcohol available to me. Yeah. We haven't gone to the grocery store yet this week. You're not gonna get any good alcohol out of a grocery store. Yeah, That's usually I can get Smirnoff, which is fine by me. Gotta go to, like, Specs, dude. Specs is expensive. Oh, boo-hoo. You got a job, you got money. Deep. Not that much. I'm... Right, you, could always, you could always raid from, from Ryan's cabinet. What do you, who do you think's also purchasing the liquor? What, neither of you guys can afford it? Oh no, we both can afford it. Okay, well, let, let's get uh, on with the cringe. As soon as you pop it up. Alright, hold on. Uh, More technical hold up. I'm going to make sure the... something really quick. I think I think the one I pulled up might have commentary, so I'm going to mute the desktop real quick and see if I can pull up one that, see if this one has, the one I pulled up has commentary. If it doesn't, we're good. If it does, I'll okay. try and find another one. Did you already read Dear Girl's description? No, I haven't. You should probably do that before, get a little context before we figure out like, like what. Well, I'm the, sharing the my screen doing. with you. You can do it. Um, all right, let's see here. Let's see, ferociously Steph. Steph has been a full-time streamer since her debut playing competitive... Colligiate. Me is literate. Colligiate Heroes of the Storm in 2016. She was... One of the first transgender streamers to ever be partnered on Twitch, and the first to bring a transgender pride flag emote to the platform. Her fight for inclusivity includes creating a competitive team composed entirely of marginalized gamers and ve vehemently, who the fuck uses that word, Vehem vehemently Vehement. opposing vehement, what? Vehement, vehemently opposing non-inclusive mechanics such as voice chat. She brought a trans a trans pride flag emote to the platform. Oh lord. Oh god. Is that person on YouTube? Oh god. You really want me to suffer? Hold on. Let's. No, that's seriously Steph. She's got. Oh, is it a different person? Yeah, different person. And I'm not okay. going to show that one, because... Uh, no. Not PewDiePie. This is where I found some of her clips. Okay, wait. So, what? How is voice? Okay, so just double checking, double checking the description. How? What? Is, what about voice chats is non-inclusive? I is it because it's it's offensive to mute? I don't know. I I don't understand her logic. 
Yeah. But let's. Oh, so you're gonna leech off of memeology? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll post his link. Much. I'll post the link to his channel in description. Uh, uh, don't let's... really need to. Don't don't really need a link to his channel. Just say, go check out memeology 101. So Lit Mobile just sent me this oh solar my God. battery pack. I'm excited. Let's see what's inside. Titan doesn't use that I really block. like the build. Uh, Chrome doesn't have it. I have Chrome. I've got AdBlock. It's Google AdBlock. Okay, hold on. This is the first one. So let's put this in. The inner mode is good. Uh, let's show the people. Uh, let's... Oh, no, I just... I'm just not cool with white supremacy, y'all. It's really not that... I think a lot of you gamers are actually white supremacists. Okay, can we talk for a moment about how her chair is green? It bothers me. Like, the fact that her, ch twi her chair is green. It blends in with her green screen. Fucking bothers me. Uh, so, yeah. I can't uh, hear anything. Oh, yeah. Um, fuck. I ha I'd have to set up a watch together. Okay. So, you're gonna have to either live without sound, or... Well, this it's all about the sound, so yeah. Do watch together. Alright. <laughs> I can't exactly I can't exactly drink if I can't, if I don't have any cringe. Foul. Anymore. Foul delay of game. Call I call foul on Caesar. Delay of game. Foul. I made a very I made a very valid claim. Fuck do I care? There's a link in the... Oh, there it is. Uh, technical difficulties. It's just half the show. Yeah. <laughs> Here. Discord just seems to hate me as a person. Like it knows when I'm when I'm there. Okay. All right. All right. I'm ready. Cat versus invisible wall. All right. So let's do. Let's do this one first. It's the video you sent me off off uh M N O one news. M one oh one news. I think that's memeology. Yeah, I also leached off of memeology. Yeah, so this dear viewers is who we're talking about. Oh <laughs> I'm still not hearing anything. Uh, it's just the Twitter video you posted in Discord. <sighs> yeah, we're getting weird up in here. We be getting weird up in here. So, let me copy... Let me copy this. All right, can you see it? Yep. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen with you. All right, let's do this. I just... 
I'm just not cool with white supremacy, y'all. Alright, I said it before. The fact that her chair fucking blends into her green screen, green screen bothers me. It's really not that. I think a lot of you gamers are actually white supremacists. Sorry. Thank you for your grand endorsement. I'm so happy I could be, be of service to offend you. Alright. Just a fact. Of it is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. If you play video games, it, no matter if you're black, white, Asian, if you're literally not from America, <laughs> and you play video games, you are a white supremacist. You, you, you're a white supremacist. There, especially it's those, just especially a fact. Those Korean, especially those Koreans that play League of Legends. Yeah, those darn Koreans. <laughs> How I feel. Gosh, these gamers probably would lose their shit all over again if they found out I'm a Twitch ambassador, lol. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I don't know much about Twitch, do you? Not at all. I've okay, never used so it. I don't know what a Twitch ambassador is. Um, I think, let's see. Well, I guess what's, I guess gotta think, like, what's a real ambassador? Uh, I don't know. I guess. I guess it would be someone that Twitch promotes, somewhat. Well, I get so so there. Uh, Twitch rivals Apex Legends here to. You that mandatory voice chat and competitive games give marginalized communities a distinct disadvantage by forcing them to choose between silence or abuse. Oh, that's her argument. Basically, if you talk in game, like in competitive game, I guess in competitive games, it, in competitive games, you ha use of voice chat, which is something people use, or people just silently climb up the ladder because they don't give a shit what voice chat does. Uh, they don't give a shit about voice chat. Wait. Uh, okay, so start over. She's against voice chat because, what, people just say mean things? Yes. Okay. Because people say mean things. Okay. So, okay. I agree with memeology. But okay, is that the same person though? Is that is that Deer Girl? Or is yes, that someone else this on is. That's Deer Girl. Girl. Hmm. Because I remember uh, they do a click on on Twitter at once brought up how there's like a that people are getting the two mix. The two mixed up, or getting two different people mixed up? Yeah, probably because they're searching for ferociously Steph, which is clearly not her Twitter handle. Well, by the way, I have something to say, which we'll do at probably the end of this video. I think, I think this was this was uh, this was all the exposure we needed for this. But uh, but very clearly we're we're making you flap <laughs> because the 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 way the Twitter is the way Twitter tone Twitter has tone you know text tends to have a tone and, and it's hard it, word choice is important okay. Okay, I found the the save the save to click thing I was talking about. Uh, uh, it was a it was a response to a post made by Niche Gamer where they seem to get Steph and Liz con er, confused as the same person when in uh, fact they're actually they're two different people. So I think even memeology got them, might have gotten them mixed up. So this is a different person. 
Yep. Not a uh, person, even if they're two to several people, still, this person's still a retard nonetheless. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's more about her. New Modelo Reserva. This is another one from Memology. Since clearly the first one wasn't correct. Oh yeah, by the way, the ADL backs her. Now this shocks me. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's what are you doing? I, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted, uh... Oops, sorry. Uh, I wanted the one of her... Ah, this is the one. Liberty Mutual take 96. This is the one. I wanted this one. Here we go. <laughs> voice chat is a competitive advantage. No not cares. not using voice chat is a competitive disadvantage. Not necessarily. If you use voice chat, you're revealing your linguistic profile, your voice, which can open you up to being harassed. <clears throat> linguistic profile. You yeah, okay I talk online. Therefore, yes, I talk online. I mean, you know, there are people out there whose voices is don't have face, like, whose voice doesn't, who have a voice but no face. And you know what tends to happen? Is that I tend to picture them as I believe their voice would be. So yes, your linguistic profile is out there. And yes, that means people are probably picturing you. So if you're a woman, you probably look like what they think a generic woman would look like. If you have an accent, they probably think you're foreign. But who cares? You're all entering the game with the same goal. To win. And if you fuck up, you're gonna get shit for it. We're considered less of a good player because there are systemic issues with our society and how people treat non-standard voices. What? I, I have a non-standard voice, and you talking about my non-standard voice is marginalizing me and making me feel bad. See, it's easy. Anyone can do it. But this uh, is no. what I wanted to talk okay, about. Okay, but my free speech, the fine, and my closing argument, my free oh, speech, boy. my free speech. This is my house. I can ban you for whatever reason I want. You have no free speech here. <laughs> Watch that chat empty out like a sieve. Like the gates have opened. Like a fucking dam. That's right. This is the United States of Phil. I am the supreme being. I make the rules, and what I say, this is not a place for you to steal censorship and freedom. You don't have. All right, hold on. This is what I wanted to talk about. So, but I'm hanging in there, and uh, I'm not going anywhere. I have power. They can't take it away from me. And honestly, you know, 
I the the these there there are some people that should be afraid of me, um, and that they are, because I I represent uh, moderation and diversity and oh god I'm gonna come for hurtful harmful people if you're a really shitty person I'm gonna stand up against you. Period. Represent diversity. And, uh, Represent uh, diversity. Um, Twitch is endorsing me to do that, so. Alright. So. Very clearly, she is power hungry. Which explains why Twitch probably disavowed her. Yeah. Uh, Twitch yeah. apparently has disavowed her according to, uh, memeology like the twitch of it disavows dis, uh tripping deer streamer that was three days ago so we're a little late to the party on this one but regardless the here yeah, well, is how well yeah you couldn't you, we couldn't not talk about her that's true even if we're she, always in parties she is 100 percent the the what the like genuine people you don't want in power they are because they never leave they will find ways to claw and scratch and bite it and the moment they are taken out of power they go insane all right so was there ever is there actually any confirmation that dear girl is actually an other kin no or, i it? honestly i don't give a fuck she can call herself whatever she wants. It is a free country. I'm not going to to bother with it. The day she stuff shows up at my house and demands I call her that is the day she ends up not being able to call herself that anymore. Like that that's let's just get this out of the way. She will not force me to call her that. I don't care if she wants me to call her that. That she can suck my cock. But here is how you deal with Twitch's trust and safety council. Don't talk to them. Don't email them. Don't message them on Twitter. Don't talk to these people. Don't talk about these people. Talk to Twitch. Go around them. Go above them. Go beyond them. Because these people, well, if they are like Steph, which, uh, from the look of it, like, it's a it's a coin flip, honestly. Most of these people look like genuine, like, good actors who want better er, stuff for the platform. Which is not what I was expecting. I was expecting to see a bunch of feminists, a bunch of radical left-wing actors. I did not expect a, basically, a scientist, a professor, an academic who's basically dedicated his entire academic career to studying online abuse. I did not expect uh, several Twitch uh, a straight white man in the mix because again, at the very least there are good actors here at least from first and from the impression I'm getting. But the, re but the thing is if they do something that Twitch as a whole doesn't like or they start censoring people or they advocate for a censorship policy do not talk to them. Don't talk to them. Go to Twitch. Go to Twitch and say, hey, this is bullshit. It, it's not helping us. It's hurting us. It, it, in fact, it's hurting us. And it's going to hurt you in the long run. Fun. Don't talk to these people because the moment you do, the moment you email them, and the moment you tweet at them, and tweet at them and tell them they're a horrible person and they're awful and blah and blah and blah, they're going to take that. They're going to cherry pick it. Take away any decent arguments you had. Just have insults and calling them Nazis and communists and whatever. And they're going to take that. And they're going to run to Twitch with it and say, look, look what horrible people frequent your platform. Look what we have received as harassment and bigotry. These things are rampant on Twitch. You need to give us more power. And so Twitch will do it because Twitch will believe these people because that is what Twitch has hired them to do. They have hired them to tell Twitch how to make their platform better for people, for the people using it. And if people throw abuse at 
these people at the tw Trust and Safety Council, the Trust and Safety Council of Twitch is going to run to Twitch and say, look at how all how awful these people are or give us more power. So the moral of the story is just ignore them and they'll go away. For now, just ignore them until they do something that is morally objectionable. I feel like I've been on the logo for the whole time. God damn it. I hate myself so much. I don't did have you, hotkeys equipped. Did you? Really? They didn't even see the video. Uh, I'll play it again. Or at least the part uh, I just made a rant about. Since most uh, of the other... Since we skipped most of the oh other ones. Oh, god I, damn. The, the, these... I can know it's the logo on screen. There, there are some people that, you know, I'm hanging in there, and uh, I'm not going anywhere. I have power. They can't take it away from me. And honestly, you know, I, the, the, these, there, there are some people that should be afraid of me, um, and that they are, because I, I represent, uh, moderation and diversity and, yeah. Uh, actually... Uh, just for reference, here's Memeology's YouTube channel. Also, go follow, subscribe to them. Actually, there. We are subscribed to Memeology now. Yay. Uh, yeah, go follow them. They're probably cool people. They're probably good people. Um, yeah, follow them on subscribe to them if you want just meme clips it looks like hey but anyway uh that's all we've got and we've been going for about an hour um i guess another news i know uh, justice league is getting finally getting the snyder cut oh good for justice league it's still a shitty movie well well, it's not about the movie. It's about the message. It's about the cause. Warner Brothers is giving the fans what they want, and journalists are reading about it. The well, journalists read about Sonic getting redesigned. So, despite the fact that so the Sonic movie was wildly successful, <laughs> when s when someone listened to the fan base, ironically enough, the fan base supported them. <laughs> Huh. Yeah. What an odd concept. Supporting yeah. the fan the fans that made this uh, this possible. Huh. Anyway, uh thank you all so much for joining us on Filthy Casuals, the second episode. Uh we should be back next week. Um oh, probably around the same time, I think. I think we'll be Academic Ale House on Fridays. Filthy Casuals on Saturdays, and we'll uh, see what pops up in news next week. I don't know what we'll do, what I'll cover on Academic Ale House shit. There's nothing new seems to pop up. It's all Rona all the time. But oh, anyway, did you guys, uh, guys talk about Biden yesterday? Yes. Okay. Well, yes, I did. All, that's all I can think of politically. Yeah. That's. Uh, yeah, nothing new really. Ha nothing new really, really been happening lately. It's just... Yeah, it's all Rona all the time, man. Anyway, uh, thank you all so much for watching and joining us. Uh, for those yeah. of you that do stick around this long, if you, uh, if you view, and I know a lot, there are like sixteen people that view this. Do try and swing by. We do interact with the chat, and we do like hearing from y'all. Also, like yeah. com so. Uh, as a final say, uh, like, comment, subscribe, maybe share us around, uh, share us your, with your friends or on Facebook or on Twitter, or we do want to yeah. see this yeah. channel grow. And like I said, uh, I've made this promise like a year ago, we will live stream. Well, we'll live stream, uh, 
on the day, the night of the election, if we hit 100 subscribers by November. Okay. Or we're only oh. about 20 away, so you know, yeah. once that yeah. happens, and I think after that, um, I've already got a Discord set up. So if you're, if you have held on this long, we do have a Discord. The link is in the description. Uh, Wait. you can join us in there and just chat. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That's and true. Other, I'm not platform. much of a Twitter person though, so the Twitter tends to be just notifications for live streams. What about the Facebook? The Facebook I haven't used for a while either, and yeah. honestly, if y'all want to interact with me on like the daily, if y'all want to just chat or be like say hi. Hey, I'm Void Soul 15 on in the Discord. Heard? So follow the link. Just at me in in the Academic Alehouse Discord. I'll come say hi. Hey, and we can have chats. All that right. being said, uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Y'all enjoy your weekend, and y'all have a nice.